thank you so much once again for, for attending my session. Um, today we're going to talk about unleashing the power of open source, um, revolutionizing mainframe insights with open telemetry. So that's my topic for today. So just to give you a quick introduction about myself, my name is Jessalyn Punangbayan. I work for Dynatrace and these are my credentials. I have a 10 years experience for as a mainframe engineer. Um, I've been part of the Zoe project. I'm a former member of the Zoe Explorer squad. I'm also an open mainframe ambassador and a modern mainframe advocate. And today, I'm working as a senior technical support for our Dynatrace. Does anybody know what Dynatrace is? Uh, all right. Yeah, a few, all right, great, a few. That's, that's great. So I prepared this presentation um, with an idea that the, my audience would not know what, what mainframe is. So I do know that some here knows mainframe, so just bear with me. I'm going to give an introduction to what mainframe is. So let's start off with what is a mainframe. So mainframes are servers. So these are big computers, just similar to the pictures. There are large room-sized machines created by IBM in the 50s. So I, I attended one session before, and they said that they use mainframes to put the man to the moon. So that's how old and amazing how, how amazing mainframes are. So they are used by businesses for complex calculations and data processing tasks. And they do process billions of transactions all over the world. And the latest one would be the Z16. And I have a picture here. I grabbed this from the internet. I don't know who this guy is. But <laughs> this is a picture <laughs> of their recent version of the Z16. So this begs really the question, like, in the day's time, who still uses mainframe? Well, I have a list here, and these are the list of people, or, or list of companies, or industries that still uses mainframe. And I could guarantee that, that most of them are ba actually banks. I work for the financial industry as well, so the banks, big banks nowadays are really using mainframes. Um, all right, so with, with, that, with that in mind, you know that all of you who has a bank account, you probably used mainframe, and that's a fact. So with this, all of this information that I about mainframe, there are, um, you know, when you are tasked to monitor the performance of your system, of course you need to investigate a problem, a specific issue that you experience. Um, there are a lot of challenges in terms of mainframe. You know, if you, these are some of the questions that I, I think, or I believe that people would ask from my experience as well, you know. Um, how can I add improvements to our mainframe system? Like, how can I prevent this problem from happening again? Um, how do I visualize a trace or having these insights? Because mainframe do process billions of transactions. How am I able to visualize and trace that? How do I optimize my resource utilization or even monitor and manage applications or integrations effectively? And these are like some of the challenges that um, mainframe engineers experiences. And if you do plan or investigate these things. It could take weeks, even months, or even years. So I identified here like five points, at least, um, typical challenges for mainframe monitoring. And the first one would be the end-to-end -end observability. And with mainframes handling massive volume self transactions, uh, monitoring such as high transactions really is a challenge. You know, we do need. Re there's a, we do need real-time real observability of transactions, especially from mobile to mainframe. Let's say you have a mobile application and you did a transaction and you want to monitor it from mobile up to coming to your DB2 database or something like that. There's an, at the end, end observability is a challenge today. The second one is troubleshooting. Troubleshooting could be a challenge. So, um, from the previous session, we mentioned about um, this, the situation with New Jersey during the pandemic that they experienced, like they are looking for COBOL developers and somehow troubleshooting could be a challenge for them. And some, with, with mainframe monitoring, that is very, that's a good challenge actually. Uh, the second one would be integration to modern tooling. As we all know that mainframes and modern technology today are somehow, if you see it, in my perspective, these are two separate entities. You know, mainframe can stand on its own, and the, the modern tooling are also separate from, from this. And integration with these modern tools is a challenge nowadays. Um, the other two would be new and improved capabilities. Um, for example, is the predictive analysis. 
if you want to predict what's gonna from the data that you have received and you want to predict what would be the critical situation that you might experience for your mainframe systems, that could be a, a big challenge. And then, of course, the shortage on skilled workforce. So with those facts, um, do we have mainframe monitoring that's available out there? Of course, of course we do. Um, we do have mainframe-specific um, products. We have Stasis View, Omega Mon, uh, Main View, from what I know, at least in, in my understanding uh, from now, is that these mainframe-specific applications are you know, no, normally installed in mainframe. You have your starter tasks in mainframe, and they are uh, monitoring the, the infrastructure metrics of your mainframe system itself. And then we have modern tooling as well, like Dynatrace Observability, the Instana, and AppDynamics. They do have integrations with mainframe, and they are actually um, have infra infrastructure monitoring. They do infrastructure metrics and as well as some observability, end-to-end um, -end observability. So I'm going to talk about Dynatrace uh, regarding this modern tooling. So with Dynatrace, there's this ZOS monitoring that offers end-to-end -end visibility for real-time, which is the Kix and IMS transaction. And it shows you this transaction journey from mobile to mainframe. So with this mainframe monitoring available today, some of those questions that we have earlier, we, we are actually like um, addressing it with this some vendors out there. But of course, these are vendor-specific solutions. And sometimes in, in your company, you are looking for some solutions that's specific for you. And the vendors are not offering that because they, they want to cover everybody and you want something that's specific for you. And with that, I want to introduce Open Telemetry. So Open Telemetry, um, are also, are also known as OTEL, it is an open source observability framework made up of collection of tools, APIs, and SDKs. So it enables IT teams to instrument, generate, collect, and export telemetry data for analysis and to understand software performance and behavior. So they usually produce three things, traces, metrics, and logs. And traces, just for a quick uh, run through, traces provide detailed information about the flow of a specific transaction. Metrics provide aggregated and summarized data of the overall, overall health performance and behavior of a system. And then logs provide a textual record of events, um, errors, and activities. So with open telemetry, it also provides the like, standard format of how observability data um, is collected and sent. And then it aims to provide unified sets of vendor agnostic libraries and APIs. And I, wanna, I think I want to emphasize on that. Vendor, open telemetry is vendor agnostic. Um, mainly for collecting data and transferring it somewhere. Um, it's part of the CNCF project, and it's a, it's a result of the merger between open tracing and open census. So I have here some major components of, of Hotel. I'm not gonna go through it because it's really, it's a lot. But one thing that I want to, to, to say is that major, one of the major components of Hotel is standardization. So there is a standard way of generating trace, metrics, and logs. And open telemetry is now supported by 40 plus vendors and as well as um, it's compat compatible to with a lot of wide variety of technologies. And if you want to know more, I have added the links here. And this presentation is available in, in the schedule as well. All right, so why open telemetry? Why are you using open telemetry? So open telemetry, I have I could, I could think of the first reason why you should use open telemetry. Number one, it's, it's why not? Why, why won't you use open telemetry? It's free, it's available, and you know, it, could, it could do the job that you're looking for in terms of observability. The second one is that it allows you to own the data that you generate. And I mean, rather than be stuck with a proprietary, proprietary data or tool, you can use open telemetry. And then it allows you to learn a single set of APIs and conventions. All right. Um, so with, uh, with, when you're integrating with Open Telemetry today, these, these are the list of languages that you can actually integrate with Open Telemetry. And today I'm going to show you um, an example where I have a Node.js program that submits Zoe APIs. So it could actually um, 
get some information from the mainframe and those traces will be um, transferred to a Dynatrace platform and you'll be able to see it as a distributed trace. Before I go with, with my demo, is, are there any questions? All right, great. Sorry, so with this, what do you need? Um, if you wanted to, let's say, try out and you wanted to integrate open telemetry with your Zoe um, application and you wanted to get mainframe metrics, what do you need? There are three things that you need. You, the first thing is that you need the instrumentation code module. And this instrumentation code module is the one that you set, that creates traces in an open telemetry standard, standard way. And you can get this code module by just going through the open telemetry documentation. There's a sample snippet of codes there. And you need to have your application. For this, for this demonstration, I'm going to use a Node.js application. And this, this application fires Zoe APIs. And you can get it from um, the Zoe sample SDK script. And the last one would be you need a distributed tracing platform. Um, there are free platforms today. You can use Jaeger, New Relic, and Zipkin. I will use Dynatrace because I do have access to that. And if you want to use Dynatrace, you can sign up as well um, in this link here. All right. So in my demonstration, I will show two things. I will generate traces, and I'll just display it into the terminal so that you would know how it looks like um, with the standard open telemetry design, or at least format. And then the other one is I will generate the traces and then visualize it um, using the distributed platform. And then we will, we will use Docker to, in, to orchestrate that application. All right. So this is my, my program. And I just want to show you my instrumentation program. And this is what I got. I'll make it a kind of bigger, maybe. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is, this is an instrumentation program. Oh, I am. <laughs> Thank you for that. Maybe I'll... No problem. I'll, I'll Thank you. <laughs> uh, all right, okay. All right, perfect. Thank you. All right, so I'll, I'll just show you the programs first. So this is my instrumentation program. And in this program, it uses the open telemetry libraries. I'll move this one. Open telemetry libraries, open telemetry SDK. And this one creates an HTTP instrumentation. And it means that um, wh what every HTTP API or SOE APIs that I, I fire, it will create a, a trace. In, this, in, in the HTTP, HTTP instrumentation format. So I have it here, and then an SDK start. And then the second one is I have a Zoe program. And this Zoe program, I got it from the Zoe GitHub. And what it does is that it fires several APIs. So it creates a session, it creates properties, uh, yeah, it creates a data set, and then it accesses, it uploads files to the data set, and it, it submits job, and you can, it also downloads the submitted job and everything. So these are the two um, programs that I have, and then I prepared a script that will just execute the instrumentation program and as well as the Zoe, the Zoe program. So I have it here. All right, let me, I'm attempt, attempting a live demonstration. I hope my accesses will be okay. So once I run this one, what it does is, is it, it executes my Node.js program and fires the Zoe APIs inside that program. And then after that, it creates traces that you can actually use um, to, to visualize it in your platform. So you can have, I'll show you here. So these are the traces that was executed. So you can actually acquire some data from these traces and then visualize it to whatever platform that you have. We do have the trace ID, we do have this URL and then this target URL and then the host and the port and everything else. And you can use this one, you can use these traces to 
to visualize your metrics or you do to visualize your traces that you have when, um, when running this application. And then you can check out what's going on inside your program. All right, so with that, I, I will check if it's created. All right, so it was created, this data set. All right, so with, with this, what is the information that, that you are actually seeing? So with, this, is, this is a trace. This is a open telemetry trace. And you can use this trace to monitor um, what's happening inside your program. So for example, well, you have a node, you have a, Let's say you have a program and then it's, it does a lot of like steps and everything. And you can use this trace to monitor that and to check if, let's say, you're, you're having a problem with your program, you're having a, an issue with response times and everything. You can get this information in this trace. You have a timestamp here, you have a duration, you have a trace ID. If, it's, if you want these traces to be connected with each other, you have a parent ID where you can actually code your program where these events are um, connected with each other and things like that. And with this, which is already okay, you can, you can use, you can collect this trace and then put it into the platform itself. Or you can have a, a, a distributed platform like similar to Jaeger and stuff and then you can transfer these traces to, to, that, to that platform. And I could show you how I did it. So I have here, I'm gonna instrument um, our application in Docker just so I could show you how, the different ways on how to do it. So I have here a container and then I, I have the similar programs and then I am going to execute uh, the instrumentation as well and then the sample program. But with this one, I'm gonna use a distributed platform which is Dynatrace so that we could visualize it and then we could have this like fancy front end visualization of, of your traces. And with this instrumentation, I wanted to take note that if you wanted to transfer your traces to a distributed platform, what you're gonna do is you need, really need um, the tenant URL and as well as the API token. And I think that's the only thing that you needed. You have this tenant URL and then you have this token. You, need, you do need to have permissions so that you can transfer your, your traces to to the platform itself, and this is the endpoint that we're gonna use because in Dynatrace, it's, it's using this V1 traces endpoint. All right, so similar to that one, I'm using HTTP instrumentation, and then here I've added resource, which is the service name of, of those traces that we have. And this service name, I want to, to just take note that the service name is like, um, folder, I, I would simplify that like it's a service name where if you click on the service, you'll be able to see what are the traces um, included in that service. So I wanted to name this and I have the version here. So when I fire this, you would be able to search for the service name and then you can see it um, into, the, into your UI. All right, so let's, let's do it this way. All right, so similar to that, I created some NPM scripts so that it will be easier. So first, I wanted to, to create a Docker build. Uh, I wanted to run this Docker build so that I could create an image into my Docker desktop, which is right here. And what it does is that it just compiles everything that I have. So basically what I have here, I'm, it's gonna be transferred to Docker and then it's gonna be compiled. And if you can see here, uh, no, here, images. I have my image right over here. And then I could run it using Docker Run. And with the Docker Run, what it does is, is the same thing that I did earlier, but it's just executed inside Docker. So I have the data sets here, it was created. They're also using, um, I also submitted the job and everything. So if I check Zoe Explorer, I'll be able to see that my data set is here. Wait, let me, there we go. The Docker data set is here. So now, 
if you remember that we, we generated trace earlier, right? So those traces are transferred to my Dynatrace instance. And I can, I'll, I'll show you how it looks like. But I need VPN first. All right, so this is my Dynatrace instance. And um, the earlier in my program, you see that I, give, I gave the URL, and this is the URL. So whenever you create uh, an instance or you, whenever you register for a distributed platform, you are given your own instance. And in this instance, you'll be able to see a lot of things. So with Dynatrace, there's a lot of features there, but we're focusing on distributed traces. And in this distributed traces page, you you'll be able to see that I have fired all of my traces, all of the traces that we have created earlier in that execution. I could, I'll just zoom in a little bit. So here, so I was able to see that all of these traces are created. I have my, my post where I created the data set. And in here, you can see that there's this date and time, and then there's this, let's go here so that I could have the, the header. The response time is here, and this is the service name. If I click on that service name that I defined inside my program, um, there's no data right now because my services is not running like all the time, but if your services, let's say, running all the time or long running service, you'll be able to see some service metrics inside this page. You'll be able to see the throughput, the, the failed requests, endpoints and topology and distributed trace that's connected to this service. So let's, let's focus on the traces that we've generated using the program. So with this, you'll be able to see um, with using the open telemetry, we were able to get um, the trace ID and the span ID and then some attributes that is very useful for, 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 for your system, like the status, the port, the API that was um, executed, and then the type of language that you're using, and then the telemetry SDK version and everything. There are timings as well. When was it, what's the start time, what's the end time, and how much is the response time? And if you click on this, you'll be able to get more information. But so far, I only have one trace because I just, that's how I configured the program. I, I wanted to have one trace for all of my steps. So it was created this way. But you can actually code it where all of the steps are connected to each other. And you can use your parent trace and connect all of those steps together so you can have your own topology of all these traces inside the program. And you can get all of these attributes and information. And you can use this information to, to generate alerts or to generate dashboards um, for your Node.js program. All right, I'm, I'm going to go back to my presentation. All right, so with that information, I just wanted to summarize that um, with what I showed you in the demonstration, I have a Zoe application that is integrated with OpenTelemetry. And I created metrics for my application where I monitored, I monitored all of the steps there because I wanted to know how fast the API is running or the, how fast the API has been executed by my program and how much is the response time from my Node.js applica application to the mainframe systems as, as well. And then I use Dynatrace or other distributed platform to, to, to visualize my trace. And you can also do this. And you, know, you, can, you can generate your traces and then distribute it to other platforms if you want. And since OpenTelemetry is used, there is standardization. So you don't have to change the format of the traces that you have collected. You just need to use it with the vendors that supporting OpenTelemetry. And you can also do this with uh, every other application, not just Node.js. 
you can use Java or what uh, other things. You can use Go, Python, whatever. So I wanted to show you a better trace um, because mine is not so good. So this is a, um, a sample of a good trace that I've seen in, in our system. So this one is a hybrid, hybrid type of monitoring. So there's this, this receipt um, trace is using open telemetry, or this Dona restaurant is using open telemetry to, to add an event called time service retrieve receipt. And with that, it's connecting to a DB2 database. And you can see that there's an MQ put, and it's updating the restaurant information, the user information of that restaurant. And you can, you can monitor your MQs and as well as DB2s in here. And then you can connect it to your um, open telemetry trace that, uh, that executed or that called that DB2, DB2 database. And with, once you use open telemetry, you can actually add a lot of resource attributes. You're the one who's, who can define those resource attributes. So with here, I, with, we've added some process information, like some description, some host name, and everything. And if you can still see it by in this one, there's our database information, and as well as some relative URL. You can also mask it if you want. Um, with, with the relative platform that you are using. Well, yeah, all right, well, that's it. What, what else? Uh, all right, okay. All right, so what's next? So my demonstration today is very simple, I'm gonna say, because I wanted to just show you the a simple usage of how you can integrate your Node.js application or your Zoe, Zoe application and integrate it with OpenTelemetry. Definitely you can improve that more if you wanna try it out. You can add more um, trace, more spans to those traces. You can add more attributes as I've shown you um, earlier and then you can link those traces to one another so that you can have just one trace and then after that one trace you can have like several traces so you can um, monitor like how your program is um, accessing your mainframe database and how you can integrate your Zoe application uh, or your Zoe APIs to, to call your mainframe, inform, to, to, to extract mainframe information from there. And you can also add metrics um, if you can test it and then as well as incorporate logs. And you can think of improvements. You can apply for different use cases like you know um, latency analysis since you have the response time of your APIs, you can improve your performance. You can check for latency. Why is it happening? How can you improve it? Um, you have the response information from those APIs. You can do anomaly detection. If it's not working properly, you can do create alerts and you can definitely create dashboards for that. You can have your SLA monitored and as well as root cause and error tracking. So what I urge you to do is to try it out. Try out and experiment. I have provided some links here, which is available into the presentation that I uploaded in schedule. If you don't have a mainframe con connection, you can, you can use IBM's open source development trial environment. They have Zoe there. You can try out the Zoe Node.js application. You can share your knowledge to, to open mainframe Slack. You can also go through, through the community of Dynatrace. Uh, I'm pretty sure people are very happy to see that. Or you can share it with me. These are, these are the links that you can communicate with me. And yeah, and that's it. If you want to know more about the topics that I talk about, I added the links here as well. Yeah, I guess, and that's all for me. Um, do you have any questions? Please. Yes, definitely. Um, w the beauty of open telemetry is that if your application, your application A is monitored by open telemetry, application B is also, let's say, monitored by some somebody else. There is a, a trace ID. L let me get out of this. You always create a span. Like you always create a trace information and as well as 
maybe. I wanted to show you something. All right, let me do this one. So there's always some linking information that is provided by Open Telemetry. So you have this trace ID and you have this parent ID. And with every this with every trace or with every span. So you call it a span. This one is called a span. And the span is a unit of work of a trace. So one trace could contain 20 spans, for example. So with with every with every spans that you create in your program, you can link it by using your parent ID. And you can you can definitely do that. Or what you want is you can use these links or you can use these events. But it also always depends on how you actually code it and you generate it. And what's the good thing is that you have your standard format. And you can apply that to every application that you have. And then you can link it together as well. Like from one service to the other, yes, you can. Okay. Is there a connector for RMF data coming out with the open telemetry format? Sorry, which, which data? Uh, RMF. ZOS facility. From what I know, IBM is creating integration for ZOS, ZOS Connect. I am not sure about our math. Okay. Our math? Yeah. Is our math made? Um, how, what is the technology? Is it Java? It's, uh, I mean, it runs as Java. Yeah, but no, uh, is it Java or what technology? That's <laughs> it. <laughs> SMF data. Right. It's SMF on the fly. Yeah. yeah. Well, Open Telemetry right now integrates with these languages. So if you create, let's say, a Java program that extracts those SMF data, right. then yes, you can. Right. Okay. Right. Right. I mean, it's an open source project. Right. I mean, you can definitely create. Yeah. <laughs> Which SMF, like SMF 30 or something? Yeah, it's all, it's all Yeah, yeah. I, I'll promote Dynatrace for you because Dynatrace also does like ZS monitoring and extracts those SMF things. But yeah, if you want to do it on your own, you need to write your own program, yes. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah, all right. Well, I hope this is useful for you or helpful at least in a way. Um, if you're interested for, if you have more questions or you want to talk to me, just, I'm in the one with the yellow jacket, I think. You can really spot me. <laughs> Thank you so much.